everyone. My name is Chandra Prabha Sharma and uh, I was blessed with a rank of 289 in the UPSC CSE uh, 2023 results. Um, I am here to share my general study strategy with you and uh, just as a disclaimer, this was something that worked for me. Uh, of course, please do apply your own wisdom and also be mindful of your own strengths uh, before you take anyone's, uh, especially my strategy and customize it according to your unique strengths. Having said that, um, the first note of accountability that I have uh, to give to you is that uh, my marks. So let's do this first, get this out of the way. Uh, so my GS marks were, nine, GS1 marks were 95. My GS2 marks, and this is a subject I truly enjoy, uh, but I didn't perform very well in it, so I'm not too happy. Uh, but this is, uh, this is my marks here for GS2. GS3, I'm not uh, very happy for sure. Uh, I got 80. I got 82 marks in GS3. And in GS4, it's a subject I really enjoy, just like GS2 and my optional public administration. Um, that for GS4, I got 127. So I will be talking about the strategy, but uh, largely this will be a macro picture uh, of the strategy because uh, I think right now the timeline that we are at, uh, aspirants need to focus on prelims 2024. So this is a very macro look and you will get subject wise uh, strategy and then topic wise strategy as well over time. And uh, yes, yeah, so let's begin. So I know that we will have uh, two types of students here. Uh, there'll be two cases. In one case, you would either be giving prelims 2024 and in the second case, your attempt is in 2025. Now, uh, for prelims 2024, my friends, my suggestion to you is that let's focus on prelims and uh, ace prelims really well, given how uh, difficult 2023 was. So the lesson there is right now we will focus on uh, prelims uh, as well as um, the challenge being that because the buzz of the final results of 23 uh, is on a high note right now, uh, just focus on prelims and um, see topper videos later when it comes or see it in your free time, but focus on prelims is my suggestion. Having said that, I also know that my own friends uh, and there are candidates who have also seen their mark sheet. Apologies, they have seen their uh, mark sheets of 2023 and either the case of not making it to the final list or even rank improvement. In that case, I know that my friends and peers uh, are especially in an anxious state because while they have to focus on prelims, they are also looking at the mark sheet that they got, right? So you already, uh, here, you've already seen your mark sheets and you know that maybe you've not performed well in a certain subject. My, I truly urge you to let this go because it has happened. Uh, you will analyze, you will see what went wrong, but don't let that affect your prelims performance is my uh, very humble advice to you. So that is one. The second thing is once we clear prelims 2024, I assure you that if you have cleared prelims 2024, you already know a huge chunk of the syllabus that you have to prepare for mains. So you don't have to go into mains preparation with anxiety that you haven't read or you don't know enough. I promise you that you have a lot of knowledge about um, general studies especially already. Between prelims and mains, you will there will be some non-prelim subjects like disaster management, which you will wrap up. So every candidate does that. Between prelims and mains, we do another revision of the uh, topics like disaster management that we have lost touch with. Um, so, but I assure you that if you've cleared prelims uh, 2024, if you clear it, then you're comfortable. You will prepare for mains very well. So right now, just focus on prelims 2024. And secondly, have faith. Uh, don't go with... Um, demons of the mark sheet that you may have seen right now into your 
uh, prelims examination hall. Just have faith in your own uh, ability. So that is for my pre-2024 friends. Uh, the second category of students will be students who are giving the 2025 attempt. In your case, your preparation will be integrated. That is, you will study uh, for prelims and mains topics in an integrated manner. In that case, what I urge is that stick to foundations. And what do I mean by foundations? The first thing is syllabus, which the UPSC has given you. All right, I might be getting the spelling wrong, but that's okay. Uh, so stick to uh, syllabus and then also stick to PYQs. Um, so that is your foundation and we will use that as the main compass for our 2025 attempt. Having said that, in your preparation, this is what you will study. You will go topic wise. So you will see the syllabus and you will see the topics and the subtopics. And when you see that, you will first look at the PYQs and get a sense of what have they asked. This is something that I would do before I would even start studying the topic. Uh, so what that does is it gives you a little anchor in terms of what to focus on in the vast pool of content you have to read. So read the PYQ before reading the, uh, the topic itself. Then you study the topic. And again, we are doing this topic wise. So study the topic. Then test yourself. Uh, you will test yourself in two ways. You will write uh, mini mocks uh, for your mains, uh, do answer writing practice on this particular topic. And the second testing you will do is for prelims, you will uh, practice and analyze PYQs again. So the PYQs that you studied here, on the testing stage, you will solve those PYQs after reading the topic. Then you will get feedback. You could get feedback from any uh, source. Um, so feedback also will be of two types. You will get your mains feedback. And your prelims feedback will be more self-analyzed. So analyze where you went wrong. What were the traps that you missed? Is there a pattern in the mistakes you are making in prelims? So that is what you will analyze. Uh, in my case, when I used to do this, for mains, I used to get feedback from uh, GS scores, a free daily answer writing program. So I used that extensively in 2022 for my uh, 23 attempt. So there was a lot of rigorous feedback that I would get from the daily answer writing program there. So that is something you can do. You can take up a daily answer writing program yourself. Um, and there are many free ones as well. So that is one. And uh, prelim PYQs is self-analysis. So once, so that is the cycle, you will basically follow a cycle and once you are at feedback, you will revise. That is largely the cycle that you will follow across your general study subjects from GS1 to GS4. Um, your goal and your north star in this case is to be, um, be mains ready before prelims. We truly don't want to clear prelims and then wonder that uh, we are not even mains ready. So to avoid that, I would recommend that you finish your general studies, your optional, your essay preparation and general studies, especially ethics, that you've wrapped all of this by, um, let's say, Jan midweek of the year in which it is your attempt, basically. So that is the goal, just be mains ready before your uh, prelims. Uh, I want to give more special focus to GS4 for, for two reasons. One is that there is a certain level of fear when it comes to ethics or um, just a sense of not knowing what to do about the topic. Um, I can assure you that the subject is very enjoyable. So we will try to enjoy the subject as we read it mainly because it's not a theoretical subject as such. There are theories and there are keywords and concepts in ethics. But at the same time, the beauty of it is that it is a very living and lively subject. Uh, you watch these concepts and the theories come to life uh, around you. So you could actually imagine in your own mind that if you were in a situation, how would you apply the theories of ethics that you are reading in that situation? 
so that's why we will try to enjoy ethics um again pyqs will be done sub topic wise within the syllabus so um you will read your uh, pyqs before you study the topic so again we go back to the cycle uh reading of the pyqs trying to understand uh, topic wise and then you study the topic you test yourself by writing answers and uh, you get feedback and then you revise a very special mention in the case of gs4 is that it can tend to be a very lengthy paper and that is why writing becomes even more important answer writing practice and that too full fledged answers not just one at one time because with um, lengthy papers what happens is we have to build a skill in time management as, uh, as well so um, answer writing practice in the case of gs4 will play an even important role having said all of this the most important cardinal rule here is that whatever your source is there are multiple sources there is also free and open source um, that you can study for for ethics but just stick to one source that is what i did even though there were a lot of suggestions on hey there's another resource or multiple other resources that are very good you really have to safeguard yourself from fomo and just stick to one source and keep revising that and keep reading that through iterations because that is what will help you consolidate the concept if there is a reputed resource all the reputed resources are covering none of them are leaving anything behind so most of them are good just stick to one having said that uh, in terms of gs for the other reason why it's very enjoyable is also i think i'll just erase this and uh, it's also a way of enriching your answers and making them not too generic is the use of keywords so your thinkers your theories this is part of that you have to integrate that into your answer uh, then you also have to include data examples case studies any recent development because then if you include recent developments for example the use of uh, automated weapon systems uh, in wars if you use these uh, recent development you show that you yourself you demonstrate that you are a thinking person and you apply ethics to recent developments as well so include this and um, so these are some ways you'll enrich your answer now the challenge is when we read for general studies we end up reading a lot and there's a lot of content around this not just for gs4 but for all of the subjects so given that the human mind has a very um, it it we have a limited bandwidth on how much we can truly recall and remember uh, there's a trick that used to help me is that i used to i'll just do this all right so the trick that used to help me on how to recall the volume of data examples case studies i used to tackle this in two ways uh, the first one was i used to make uh, very strong associations with the data or the example using emotional quotient so for example if there is a data saying that uh, 70% of our prisoners are under trial if you truly sit and imagine what it could feel like for that under trial prisoner and as a public as an aspiring public servant how would you try to solve that issue you will be able to remember that data better in exam situation and stress so when you see a question where you can apply this particular data that you have memorized you will be able to recall it better so that is the first tap into your emotion co emotional quotient to help your neurons fire and wire at the very right time when you need to pick that particular piece of data from the pool of knowledge that you have accumulated so that is one the second thing i used to do is data organization and i will try to show it visually here um let's do 
Now let's say that across this one, one and a half years, you have accumulated a very vast pool of uh, data, examples, uh, case studies, quotes, thinkers, all of that. What I did is on Excel and you can use any other method, you can use pen paper too. Uh, on Excel, I used to have columns in which I would write essay, GS1, GS2, GS3, 4 and PubAd. So I'll take the uh, under trial data example again here too. Now let's say I have remembered the 70% uh, data that 70% of our prisoners are under trial. Now in this case, I used to do uh, this mental exercise of applying this data and I used to do it between prelims and mains, I used to do it every night before I would go to bed. So how would I do it? I would think of what topic will I use this data in if an essay comes on it. So for example, this year we had a topic on uh, if a nation has justice, it does not need charity. So if this is the topic, you can use this data. So to truly exercise your mind to think of how you are going to use this data will help. So in SA, this is done. In GS1, you can think of it from the social justice perspective. You can think of questions that can be formed around this data and what sort of question will you uh, pull this piece of information and, apply and use it in your answers. In GS2 itself, um, the judiciary, governance. So just really uh, working your brain to practice how will you apply the data that you have in the answers you're writing. In GS3, another example is for this particular data is that when your justice systems are not working effectively, it affects your foreign direct investment. It affects your credit ratings. It affects your global, perspective, uh, global uh, perception. Then in GS4, of course, again, justice, inequality. Uh, why inequality? Because a large chunk of the 70% under trials come from low-income families who cannot afford uh, high legal fees or even money for bail. So you can uh, use this data in inequality. And then for PubAd as well, uh, we have uh, we have judiciary, we have reforms. So you can, this is just an example of how to organize your data. Now this is just one data point, but by the end of my one or two uh, years of serious preparation, the recent time when I started this method, I had pages and pages of data, but what was good is I had practiced my mind on how to apply it across the papers. And then what happened is you were recycling this data across different papers. So you didn't have to constantly keep learning new data and new case studies or new examples. So this is not just for um, like numeric data, but it is also for examples. I used it for examples. I used it for quotes. I used it for case studies. This is how to, if anyone's a fan of Sherlock here, uh, it's actually a way of creating that mind map and the mind palace where you have all these data points and examples, but you build the skill and the muscle memory in your brain to truly retrieve that information you have learned and apply it across the different subjects. So that will really um, reduce your mental bandwidth that gets used up in memorizing much more data. So that is one advice I have for you here. And uh, yes, in summary, we will stick to foundations. We will uh, use PYQs as a guide on how to prepare for the different topics for mains in general studies. And uh, we will also ensure that we are writing um, and getting good feedback. And of course, uh, the golden North Star that we will aim to be mains ready before prelims. And that's it. Yes. Uh, thank you for your time. And I hope the strategy helps.